The Department of Homeland Security had to release a statement saying that the ICE figures were being completely misinterpreted, saying the data includes individuals who entered the country over the past 40 years and also includes people that are in jail, not people who are out there roaming the streets. And that's obviously a key piece of information in this puzzle. And the American public is smart enough to know that the narrative that Donald Trump is putting forward does not accurately represent what's going on. There's a ton of misinformation about immigration, especially right now, because that's what Trump wants to make his campaign about. He can't run on policy, so he has to scaremonger over immigration. And some parts of the government, especially those departments and bureaus who are loyal to Trump, are going to do his bidding. I couldn't find the uh, the counter numbers to what ICE had released, and I definitely looked for matter. them. It doesn't matter. The numbers are... It does. No, it doesn't. It does. It, because, because on Friday when we talked about this, the idea was that this was a Biden-Harris problem. No one said, except for me, I think, that this covers the entire timeline. No, that I someone who entered I said it under correlates with the Bush. Here they are, caught fudging the numbers on immigration stats. They're trying to misrepresent the actual state of immigration in this country by conflating the past 40 years worth of immigration flow. And they're doing that to make people think the problem at the border is much worse than it is. An extension of that is J.D. Vance and Trump and his allies lying about what's happening in Springfield, Ohio. Of course, that story's been totally debunked, but now they've pivoted. These bastards were more offended by stories of cats being eaten than real stories, real stories reported here of actual rape and murder. And if you ask why those other stories existed, it was the only way to get these a-holes in the media to even look at this story. They're not going to acknowledge that it wasn't true. They're going to say it was essential to lie to get people to pay attention. As a result of those lies, that town has been continuously harassed, subject to bomb threats, evacuations, lockdowns, and more. Is that the attention you wanted? Because if so, congrats. And they will continually lie about the immigration system. Here's Trump talking about the CBP-1 app. Think of this, they're using a phone app where the migrants are allowed to phone them in so they find out, but it's really, you know who really uses it? The cartels use it. The cartels use it because they pay off everybody. Our crooked people, they pay them off. They have a phone app. Where's the best place to drop the people? But they want to flood up Pennsylvania in particular, Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin, and the entire Midwest with thousands of migrants from the most dangerous countries on Earth destroying the character of small towns and leaving local communities in anguish and in despair. Like every government service, immigration is being digitized. It just makes sense. So now people can do things to become citizens or to try to enter the country legally through this app. And the right wants you to think that it's being exploited somehow. This goes beyond just simple opposition to undocumented immigration. They're opposed to all immigration, period, because that's what he's talking about here. And to continue to keep people in fear, they will lie about the realities of immigration in this country, and they'll blame immigrants for crimes. There really isn't a low that Trump isn't willing to reach when it comes to fear-mongering over immigration. They don't commit crimes like us, no, no. They make our criminals look like babies. These are stone-cold killers. They'll walk into your kitchen, they'll cut your throat. Of course, this keeps the average Fox News viewer or the boomer voter living in fear, but it also really heightens xenophobic sentiment. And these attacks and all of this anti-immigrant scaremongering feeds into another avenue for attack, and that is Trump cracking down on crime, essentially by supporting police brutality. You see these guys walking out with air conditioners, with refrigerators on their back, the craziest thing and the police aren't allowed to do their job. One rough hour, and I mean real rough, the word will get out and it will end immediately. End immediately. You know, it'll end immediately. Now, when you hear that, I mean, he's literally describing the plot of the movie Purge for people who haven't seen it. Yes, that one really rough hour line feels a lot like the Purge, but 
In this case, it's for the cops. The cops get to do the purge? How is that any different than the Republican Party's stance on policing right now? Except with this, there is an explicit green light. And it really is ironic that all of this is part of the right's quest to be seen as the law and order party while they simultaneously have been trying to subvert election law around the country. We saw it in 2020, and they're going to have an even more robust effort in this cycle. I'm here only because they cheat, and they cheat in this state, especially in Philadelphia. And I mentioned a couple of the areas, but for the most part, but Philadelphia is out of control. Detroit is out of control. Atlanta is out of control. Places are out of control, out of control. Because if there was no cheating, if God came down from a high and said, I am going to be your vote tabulator for this election, I would leave this podium right now because I wouldn't have to speak. We wouldn't have any problem. We have to have a landslide because they cheat so damn much. They want to cheat. They want to break the law. But where's the punishment? Do they get roughed up by the police? No, 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 no. It's only for immigrants and people of color. And to go back to Trump's purge fantasy, that movie and its sequels have constant themes of class commentary. It highlights the class divide in this country. And of course, Trump is part of the elites. He doesn't care about working people, and we saw that during his first four years. But still, Jesse Waters of Fox wants people to think that Trump is the candidate that cares more about the working people. Getting outclassed, she's getting outworked. And when they ask in these polls, which candidate cares more about people like you? He's completely closed the gap. Now, as a Republican, That's especially as Donald Trump, caring more about people like you. I'm not saying he's winning, but he's right there, Jessica. I really but felt that care when he cut taxes for billionaires and corporations, but didn't do it permanently for working people. He's in this for himself. That's why he's running. He doesn't offer much on policy. A lot of it is about a myth of what he wants America to be, but ultimately it's about preserving him and his power. It's about a way and an avenue for him to fight back on legal challenges to avoid facing any accountability for his own actions. And deep down he knows that and sometimes lets it slip. No, this is, this is a radical left lunatic we're dealing with. By the way, if she wins, it's not gonna be so pleasant for me, but I don't care. And of course you can recognize that he's lying about immigration. He wants his supporters to live in fear and he overinflates what's actually happening at the border. And it's really important for you to stay diligent and remain informed because unfortunately millions of people around the country think that hundreds, if not thousands of immigrants are sprinting across the border day after day, coming in, breaking into people's homes, killing them, committing crimes all over the place. As a result of these lies, towns across the country Country that are subject of them are terrorized, not by immigrants, but by Republican supporters who believe those lies. That is Trump putting himself before his supporters.